What's up, Algebra 2? Uh, today in class we went over problem solving using formulas. In this case we talked about interest and total amount using interest and principal and whatnot. And uh, so here's the problem that I brought up in class. If you borrow, borrow uh, $12,000 at an annual interest rate of 2.5%, then at the end of 10 years, how much will you owe? Because if you borrow that much money, probably for college or maybe even a car. Anyways, if you borrow a certain amount, you're going to owe more than that at the end of 10 years because of interest. Well, we have a nice little formula for interest. And it is I equals PRT. So I, that is the interest. Okay. Or on some of your problems, it might say simple interest. Same thing, simple interest, okay? Now the P stands for principal. This is the original amount that you borrowed or on some problem, problems that you um, started a, a savings account or something. So this is your initial amount, your principal. Okay? R is your rate. So in this case, the 2.5% is your rate, and T stands for time. Okay, These are called variables. They stand for something. So what we have to figure out are, what are the variables? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these words. Again, interest, principal, rate, and time. So we're going to establish variables. The best thing to do on word problems, the first thing you want to do is establish variables. So, I'm going to go ahead and write it up here, I equals PRT. Well, we don't know what the interest is. We're trying to figure that out. We know that P in this case, your principal, the initial amount borrowed, is 12000 Okay? The next one is R, rate. But I want to show you something. When you plug in rate into a problem, you cannot use the percentage. You have to use the decimal. So what you have to do is you have to take this 2.5% and move the decimal over twice. So actually, we're going to use 0 0.025. So 0 0.025, this is our rate. Again, when it gives you percent, the way to plug it into the problem is you move the decimal over twice because percent is whatever that number is over 100. 2.5 over 100, which is 0 0.025. Okay. And lastly, time in this case, since we're talking about years, so we have 0 0.025, it's gonna be 10 years. So there you have it, 10 years. So all we have to do, well, to begin with, is plug in. So we know that I is equal to our principal, times our rate, 0 0.025 times our time, which is 10 years, okay? So in our formula, it says just go ahead and multiply all those three. So therefore, I is equal to, when you do the calculations out, $3,000. So you borrowed 12000 After 10 years, there has been three thousand more dollars of interest that has been accrued. So, but that's not what it's asking. It's not. It's not asking us to find the amount of interest that you earned. It's. It's wanting to know how much total will you owe after ten years. So we have another formula for that. The formula for that is a total amount. Okay. Total amount. Okay, it's equal to your initial principal, so it's the amount that you first borrow plus your interest, plus your interest, which in this case, PRT. So A equals P plus PRT. Well, this problem, now that we found the interest, isn't so bad. Our total amount is our principal, 12,000, plus our interest that has built up, which is 3000 Therefore, what you owe after 10 years 
is fifteen thousand dollars. So, what does that mean? You owe a lot of money. Apply for some scholarships so you don't have to pay that much. So, but anyways, in terms of the how to do this problem, that's how we do it. Interest is principal times rate times time. Total amount is principal plus your interest. Okay. So hopefully this made sense. If you need, just keep going back and watching this over. The biggest thing I need to tell you, again, just to keep in mind, is this 2.5%, when you plug it in to the formula, you need to plug it in as a decimal, 0 0.025. Move that decimal over twice. Okay? So good luck with that, and yeah, save up for college, because that's a lot of money to be owing people. All right? Good luck with problems like that. All right, well, now we have our second problem. Uh, the question is, how long will it take to double your money if you put $5,000 into a savings account at a 1.5% annual interest rate? Now, this is also assuming that you don't put any more into it. It's just that initial $5,000, you never touch it again. How long will it take for you to double your money? Um, I put the formulas in here for total amount, A equals P plus PRT, and just interest is PRT. So I equals P times R times C, principal times rate times time. Well, so we need to figure out, we need to establish some variables. Figure out what we're talking about. What are we given? We're given 5,000. We're going to put in 5,000 to begin with. That means it's our principal, okay? So we say P is equal to 5,000, okay? Our interest rate, it says 1.5, so that is R. But remember, instead of using 1.5, we have to move the decimal over twice, okay? So therefore, it would be 0 0.015. Now, we don't know what time is, but we need at least one more variable here so if we're looking for total amount here, we need to figure out, do we know the total amount? Because we know P, we know R, we're finding T, therefore we must know A. Because remember, it says, how long will it take to double your money? If it's 5,000, okay, doubling our money would make it 10,000. Therefore, we know A is equal to 10,000. Okay? Again, for these word problems, they're not going to give you not enough information. Okay. Every problem gives you enough information to solve. You will have all the variables being assigned a value except for one, and not one you have to find. In this case, since it says how long, that means we don't know t. We don't know time, so we have to solve for it. So we plug into the formula exactly how it's written. Therefore, we say 10,000 is equal to our principal, 5,000, plus... PRT, 5,000 times R times time, sorry, we know R, my bad, 0 0.015 times time. Because we don't know what time is, we're trying to solve for time. Okay? Now, if you work this out, you get 10,000 equals 5,000 plus, remember, this is multiplied. Don't add these first. This is multiplication over here, so you have to do that first. 5,000 times 0 0.015 is 75. So we have 10,000 equals to 5,000 plus 75 T. Now we want to get leave the T there and get everything else out of the way. So therefore we're going to move the 5,000 by subtracting. Therefore you have 5,000 is equal to 75 T. And lastly, we're going to divide by 75. Therefore, T is equal to about 66.7 years. So what does that mean? What am I trying to say with this problem? Is that unless you started it at birth, you're probably not going to double up on that money. So don't expect it to double up. But if you're trying to figure out how long it would take, it would take 66.7 years to get from $5,000 to $10,000 at a 
annual interest rates. So again, figure out what the equation you're going to use, figure out what formula you're going to use, establish a value for each variable except the one that you're trying to find. So that's what we did here. And once you do that, just plug exactly into the formula. Okay? Don't change the formula. That's why it's a formula, because it doesn't change. Okay? And once we plug in, we just solve for the variable that we're looking for. So hopefully you understood what we went over in class. If not, here goes the examples. If you need to watch it over and over, do that. If you need more help at school, just let me know. I'm always down to help you guys. And uh, yeah, so good luck with that. Invest some money when you have some later on. I almost dropped my pen, but I caught it because I can. Anyways, I'm done with the video. Have a good day. Hope you watched it. And if you watch it today, which is August 12th, 2010, if you watched it all the way through and you tell me tomorrow that you watched it all the way through, I'll give you a little extra credit. So we'll see who does that. Anyways, hope you understood it. Have a good day. Bye.